I'm just saying it's time for you to leave. Can't you look at yourself in the mirror and feel embarrassed? Am I embarrassing to you? Yes, you are. Everything about this is embarrassing. Even my close friends and boss are here, and thinking about them finding out you're becoming part of the family is so frustrating. My name is Olivia. I was born with a physical condition, and I use a wheelchair instead of my legs. I grew up in a family of five with my parents, who have passed away, and my lively brother, John. My parents raised me with as much love and care as any other child. They showered me with affection, and my brother John, though a bit overprotective, has always been supportive. That's how I've lived a happy life. Now, Madam CEO, here's the schedule for this month. I'm grateful and happy to be busy, but I do wish for a little break sometimes. Despite my appearance, I'm the CEO of a company. Even though my body is different, I do my best in everything I can. That's why I studied hard and didn't want to be outdone by others. My hard work paid off, and I was able to start my own business. While I'm discussing the schedule with my secretary, I get a call. Hello, John, what's up? Hey, sorry to bother you when you're busy. Actually, I'm getting married, and I wanted to tell you first. Olivia, really? Congratulations, what's the person like? We met through work. They're kind, good at cooking and housework, just wonderful. That's great. As your sister, I'm relieved you found someone. Stop talking like our mom, will you? Well, I was just worried if you could really find someone wonderful. How? Well, the wedding is set for five months from now. That's quite sudden, isn't it? With how things are nowadays, we just thought it was the right time. I'm sorry it's all so rushed, but can you make it, Olivia? Of course. I'll be there. It's your wedding after all. I'll make it work no matter what, but you better come to my wedding too. Thanks. Wait your wedding, Olivia. I haven't heard anything about that. Haha, <laughs> don't work too hard. Okay, see you. As I hurriedly managed my work schedule for the wedding, my secretary watched me with a warm smile. My brother and I are busy people in different industries, and I haven't met his fiancé yet. The day of the wedding came and as I was about to enter the venue, someone called out to me. Hey, you there, wait a moment. Oh, are you talking to me? Are you, by any chance? What? It's obvious, isn't it? I'm the bride, the star of today's show. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Olivia, John's sister. I was glad to meet Nicole, the bride, but her attitude seemed a bit strange. While I was wondering about it, she suddenly said, Hey, what's with this woman? I can't believe this. Nicole, what's going on? Don't touch me, please. I wasn't told that John had a sister like you. I knew he had a sister, but not like this. I had no idea. It seemed like Nicole didn't like how I looked. That's why she acted so cold when we greeted each other. What's the matter with you? She said. I don't care if you're John's sister or whatever. That's a different matter. How will you compensate if you infect me with something? Please calm down. There's nothing about me that you can catch. Keep quiet. Your droplets are spreading. I can't believe this. People like you should be mentioned beforehand. Finding this out on the wedding day is the worst. Worst? What about me is the worst? You should figure it out yourself. Anyway, John and I are getting married, so I'll have to deal with you whether I like it or not. If people find out someone like you is my sister-in-law, I'll be humiliated in front of everyone. Use your head a bit. Use my head? What do you mean? I'm saying you should be considerate enough to leave. Can't you look at yourself in the mirror and feel ashamed? Am I an embarrassment to you? Yes, all of it. Everything about this is embarrassing. Even my close friends and boss are here, and it's embarrassing that they'll know you're part of the family. Do you always think like this? Huh, that's none of your business. Since I've caught John, the CEO, don't you dare get in my way. I was sure that Nicole was tricking my brother. She was clearly pretending to be nice. My brother, who is always kind and never gets angry, had been fooled by a strange woman before. Remembering those times, I didn't want to make things worse on his special day. 
Thinking about how important this day was for my brother, I decided to leave quietly. Um, then I'll be leaving now, I'll just leave the gift here. Huh, I don't need money from someone like you. You don't even look like you can hold a decent job. You're just leeching off John, aren't you? I bet your gift is something small like $7, right? Is that so? Then I'll take this $70,000 gift back with me. It's quite heavy though. $70,000? Wait, if you had that much money, you should have said so earlier. I'll take it. Sorry, I've already put it away. It's too late now. I'll be leaving then. No, you leave that gift here. And why do you even have that much money? Oh, I see. That's money you took from John, isn't it? No, actually, I run a company that makes mobility equipment with a global reputation. Even though I look different, my company makes $700 million a year, so a gift like this is no big deal. All the more reason to leave that $70,000 here. I'll use it for John and my happiness. Honestly, I don't approve of your marriage to my brother. I can't accept someone like you who is just after his money. Stop raising your voice. It's your fault for being deceived. What's all this about? My brother John appeared, and Nickel looked shocked. Uh, this is, well, what are you talking about? Brother, no, it's not like that. I'm not after the money. I just wanted to support and be there for you, John. Hey, Nickel, what did you say to my precious sister, Olivia? What did you mean by what you said? John, why are you so angry? It doesn't matter to me if you're after my money or whatever. You can do as you like. It's my responsibility, and even if we break up someday, I won't be angry. But what I absolutely won't forgive is you disrespecting my dear Olivia. I was really surprised to see my usually gentle and calm brother raise his voice. But I also felt truly happy to hear him standing up for me. Meanwhile, Nicole, who was scolded by my brother, said, Well, then she can come to the wedding, okay? So first, John, let's calm down, all right? What do you mean she can come? We don't need your permission. Do you really think I'd go through with a wedding with someone who's been so cruel to Olivia, the most important person in my world? There's no way that's happening. Why not? I just said your sister can come. That doesn't matter anymore. I can and won't marry a woman who insults my family. We're breaking off the wedding. Breaking off the wedding? Why? Both Olivia and I lost our parents when we still needed them. Olivia cried because she was lonely, but she still tried to cheer me up when I was sad. Even though she wanted to cry, she held it back and gave me the brightest smile. She was just a little kid in elementary school, and I was already in high school, a grown man. She held back her tears and told me to smile, and that gave me strength. Brother, you remembered that? Of course I do. How could I forget? You were holding back so many tears but still managed to smile. I still remember that smile of yours to this day. That's why, even when work gets tough, I think of your smile and it keeps me going. You tried to do house chores you only learned in home economics, but before I knew it, you are just making meals. You are preparing lunches too. Olivia and I supported each other through life like that. I won't forgive anyone who insults such an important family member. Apologize to Olivia. Supporting each other, really? That's so exaggerated. Take back every single thing you said to Olivia. Look her in the eyes and apologize properly. Don't say anything else. My brother kept insisting that Nicole apologize to me for the disrespect she showed. We siblings have had struggles that only we can understand. And maybe that's why her words felt like an insult. As I stood there, unable to do anything but watch my brother, someone approached us. Sorry to interrupt, just popping in here. Hey, do you even understand what kind of company you're working for? What? Why is the CEO here? You see, John has helped me a lot in business, and we even go out for meals together when we have time in our private lives. Isn't our company a distributor of mobility equipment? Yet your attitude and behavior are completely unacceptable from any angle. I looked at him surprised. Wait, Scott, 
Why are you here? I asked. Scott, I'm sorry you had to see such an unpleasant scene, John said. But do you know Olivia? I had no idea either. I'm also shocked to learn that John's dear sister is Olivia. I'm in a relationship with Olivia, and I want to marry her. So I'm asking for your no, my brother-in-law's permission, Scott explained, his words a bit awkward. Really, Scott, bringing this up right now, and suddenly talking about being brothers-in-law? John said, shaking his head. This is typical Scott. John, Olivia is getting married to Scott, Anna interjected, trying to lighten the mood. But I trust you, Scott. I know you'll take good care of Olivia. Why is everyone suddenly so happy? John wondered aloud. John, I promise to devote my life to making Olivia happy. I won't let you down. Please, let me marry Olivia, Scott pleaded earnestly. And you're saying this here, right now, John said, still processing. My boyfriend Scott, who is also the CEO of Nickel Company, had just revealed his relationship with me to my brother John. They had both been friends in business and in life, but neither knew how we were all connected until now. Nickel, who was witnessing all this, finally spoke up. Wait a minute, what? So this woman is the girlfriend of our company's CEO, and John, the savvy entrepreneur, is her brother? That's incredible, but even if it's luck, Olivia worked hard to get here. She faced everything head-on and used her brains to succeed. Don't belittle her achievements by calling it luck. And by the way, she just became my fiancé a moment ago. So you understand what it means to insult the woman I'm marrying, right? Nickel replied defiantly, So what if I did? I don't care if she's your girlfriend or fiancé or whatever. What's a CEO going to do? It's just personal stuff, right? Well, yes, Scott replied calmly, but there are clients here, and the company's reputation is at stake. Your remarks, Nickel, are a serious issue. In my company, such behavior would be grounds for dismissal. I don't want to work with a company that harbors individuals like you. You can't just fire me. That would be a problem, Nickel protested. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I can't stand the idea of someone like you becoming my sister-in-law. If you can't understand why you need to apologize, then there's no point in talking any further, Scott said firmly. Wait, please. Breaking off the engagement and getting fired are big problems for me. How am I supposed to live if that happens? Nickel begged, her tone desperate. Why don't you look for another company? Scott suggested calmly. I'm done with you, Nickel, Scott said firmly. But you still want me to get you a job at my company? Nickel's eyes widened with desperation. John, please, can you help me get a job? I'm your sister-in-law. Isn't there something you can do? She pleaded. John shook his head slowly. Nickel, you really don't get it, do you? After all this mess, there's no way you're getting hired at my company. It's not about family ties, it's about trust and respect. But I'm family. Isn't it embarrassing to leave me unemployed? Nickel's voice cracked as she tried to defend herself. Embarrassing? No, it's not embarrassing, John said, his tone softening slightly. But if you're just calling this a mistake, it means you actually believe what you said. You haven't shown any real intention to apologize. It doesn't look like you mean it. Nichols' face flushed with panic as she realized the gravity of her situation. I didn't mean to offend anyone. I just said the wrong thing. If it was a mistake, Nickel, it was a big one, Scott said, his expression serious. I faced many people's judgments but you're the first to speak so openly and harshly to me. It was a shock, but now I see that some people really think like you do. Does that mean you'll forgive me? Nickel asked, her eyes wide with hope. No, I can't forgive you, Scott replied, shaking his head. Who wouldn't be upset after hearing what you said? Imagine if someone spoke to you like that. Would you be happy? If it were me, I'd probably respond even more harshly, Nickel admitted her voice barely a whisper. Well, it's going to be tough for you from now on, but good luck, Scott said, turning away from her. Marrying someone who can say such hurtful things is impossible. 
Our parents in heaven would be disappointed if I married someone like that. Olivia nodded in agreement. That's true. Mom was so kind, and Dad was very compassionate. I see now that my idea of a perfect couple was based on them. I want to have a relationship like that with Scott. Scott smiled at Olivia, his eyes softening. We can build that kind of relationship together, Olivia. John stepped forward, his expression stern. Scott, could you let go of Olivia's hand for a moment? It seems you've made your decision, brother. And one more thing, Nickel. You are responsible for all the wedding expenses. Nickel's face fell. Ouch, that's going to be a big hit on my wallet, she muttered, her voice filled with despair. Well, Nickel, Scott continued, I think it's best to call off the wedding. I've already told all my friends, and I've posted about the dress, the food, and the venue on social media. Nickel's eyes widened with realization. No, no, I can't have the wedding called off. I've already told everyone. I've shared everything online. How am I supposed to explain this? Maybe you should delete those posts, Scott suggested calmly. Most people who see them don't even know you. Is it really worth boasting to strangers about something that's not going to happen? Nickel looked around frantically, trying to find a way out of her predicament. Wait, please. This is impossible. You have to reconsider. Think about it, please, she begged. Scott sighed, looking at Nickel with a mix of pity and resolve. Nickel, you need to think this over. What you did was hurtful and disrespectful. It's going to be hard for you, but you have to face the consequences of your actions. As Scott turned to leave, Nickel's voice grew more desperate. Please, Scott, don't leave me like this. I'll do anything to make it right, she cried. Scott paused for a moment, then continued walking away, leaving Nickel to reflect on her actions. The reality of her situation was finally sinking in and she realized that she had to take responsibility for the chaos she had caused. Meanwhile, Olivia and John watched the scene unfold with a sense of relief and closure. They knew that their family dynamics would be different from now on, but they also understood that this change was necessary for everyone involved. As they left, Olivia took Scott's hand, feeling a sense of hope for their future together. Despite the turmoil, she knew that they had made the right decision and that they could face whatever challenges lay ahead with confidence and strength. Back at home, Olivia and Scott sat down together, reflecting on the events of the day. I'm so proud of you, Scott, Olivia said softly. You stood up for what's right, even when it was difficult. Scott smiled, holding Olivia close. I couldn't have done it without you, Olivia. You've been my rock through all of this, and I'm so grateful for your support. As they looked out the window, the sun set on a day that marked a new beginning for them both. They knew that the road ahead wouldn't always be easy, but they were ready to face it together, with love and determination. And so, they moved forward, leaving the past behind and embracing the future with open hearts and unwavering faith in each other. I feel like I hear something but let's not worry about it and move on. Wait, where are you going, brother? We're off to host an engagement party for Scott and Olivia. Well then, my princess, shall we go? Wait, what? Brother Scott, this is suddenly so embarrassing. Thanks to my brother's kind planning, what was supposed to be a simple wedding turned into a surprise engagement party for Scott and me. Many of our colleagues and mutual friends were invited. When Scott and I arrived and started greeting everyone, my brother suddenly began crying. Some people found it amusing and laughed, while others, maybe feeling touched, also shed some tears. Because of my brother's kind nature, Scott and I could announce our engagement in a warm and friendly setting. It felt good to have the support and love of our friends and family around us. Everyone seemed genuinely happy for us, and it made the moment even more special. Meanwhile, Nickel was kicked out of the venue, just as my brother had said she would be. Nickel had to pay for the entire cost of the ceremony, and went into debt to cover it. She had hoped to show off her new status as the CEO's wife and enjoy some fame and respect. However, things didn't go as she planned. 
she was fired from her job, and instead of living the life of a CEO's wife, she's now being chased by debt collectors. Nickel had planned to live with my brother, so her apartment lease had already been cancelled. Now, she's left without a place to live and is dealing with the reality of her situation. Some people in the industry said they saw her in the park, looking lost and distressed, but it's unclear if it was really her. The glamorous life she hoped for has crumbled, and she's facing the harsh truth of her decisions. As for me, Olivia, I'm finally getting married to Scott. Don't worry, we will live happily together. My brother assures me that Scott is trustworthy and that we will have a wonderful life together. We're excited to start this new chapter and build a happy future. I know it's safe, but there's still this uneasy feeling I can't quite put into words. What is this feeling? Hey John, I hope it's not too forward of me to ask, but could the four of us visit the grave on our next day off? I'd really like to meet your parents too. Scott, you're such a kind guy. Hey brother, you're going to make me cry again, haha. <laughs> Thanks to Scott's thoughtful suggestion, we've decided to spend our next day off visiting her parents' grave. It's something that feels both important and right to do. Even though my brother recently broke off his engagement, he's managed to stay his usual cheerful self, which is comforting to see. He's been so strong through everything, and I hope that one day a wonderful person will come into his life someone who will make him the happiest man in the world. He deserves so much joy and love. As I thought about this, I realized my brother likely felt the same way. He's always been someone who looks out for others, and it's clear he wants the best for everyone around him. When I look up at the sky, it's a bright, clear blue without a single cloud in sight. There's something so peaceful about it, and it feels like the perfect setting for what we're planning. Watching my brother as he gazes up at the sky, I can't help but feel a deep sense of gratitude for everything he's done for me. He's always been there, looking out for me and making sure I was taken care of. I silently thank him in my heart, appreciating all the love and support he's given me over the years. As we plan our visit, I think about how meaningful it will be. Visiting the grave is not just about paying respects, it's about connecting with the past and honoring the memories of those who came before us. It's a chance to reflect on where we come from and the people who shaped our lives in ways we may not even fully understand. I know this visit will bring up a lot of emotions, but it feels right to do this together. Scott's suggestion has given us the opportunity to share something deeply personal and meaningful. I can already feel how this experience will bring us closer, and I'm grateful for that. My brother has always been someone I look up to. He's faced so many challenges with a smile, and he's never let anything bring him down for long. I admire his strength and resilience, and I know that he's going to find happiness again. It's just a matter of time before someone amazing comes into his life and sees him for the incredible person he is. As I look back on everything, I realize just how much my brother has sacrificed for me. He's always put my needs first, making sure I had everything I needed to succeed. He's been my rock, my guide, and my friend. And I'm so grateful for everything he's done. I can't imagine my life without his support and love. The sky above is so vast and endless, just like the gratitude I feel for my brother. As he stands there, Looking up at the sky, I silently tell him, Thank you for everything. Thank you for raising me with so much care and for always being there when I needed you. This visit will be a way to honor not just her parents, but also the bond we share as a family. It's a chance to come together and support each other through the ups and downs of life. I'm looking forward to the day when we can all stand together at the grave reflecting on the past and looking forward to the future with hope and love. My brother's strength and kindness inspire me every day. I hope that he finds someone who appreciates him for who he is and makes him as happy as he's made me. He deserves all the love and joy in the world, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for him. As we prepare for our visit, I feel a sense of peace knowing that we're doing something meaningful together. 
It's a reminder of the importance of family and the enduring bonds that connect us, no matter what challenges we face. I'm grateful for this opportunity to share something so special with my brother and Scott, and I know it will be a day we'll always remember.